Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So the Spring Boot team gave us another configuration option for Spring, and that's a YAML. YAML stands for yet another markup language. And it's an alternative to using the property files and actually can be used in conjunction with the property files. So Spring and Spring Boot is gonna source things in into the context and it doesn't really care where they're at, whether it's coming in from an environment variable, system property, something that was passed in on the command line or properties file. So there's a number of ways of getting these into the spring context. And YAML is just another option. In the hierarchy, it's ranked about the same as a properties file. So it is lower down on the food chain, but YAML is a, a pretty nice syntax and does offer us some advantages with inside of Spring Boot. Now, you can mix and match properties files and YAML files. But unless you have a, a reason to do so, I'd recommend against it. Pick one or the other. 90% of the time, property files are just going to be be fine. YAML is it, cool to write in. I like it. So not, I'm a little torn on it, but if I was building a big enterprise application, I'd say pick one. You're probably going to be better off on, on standardizing on one or the other rather than having your various properties scattered across both property files and YAML files. It could make your application harder to maintain and, and for those coming behind you to understand what you did. So let's go in. I'm going to take a simple look at setting up YAML configuration example for Spring Boot. Okay, we're back in our project now and I've added in an application-dev.yaml, Y-A-M-L. So again, that stands for yet another markup language. And it does have a slightly different syntax and I'm going to show you how we can mix and match here. So I'm going to take out of the properties file. I'm just going to uh, cut this out and I'm going to paste it over here. Now the syntax of a properties file versus YAML is a little bit different. So what we want to do is get rid of this and indent that. And again, the same here. And I got a mistake here, get rid of that. So what's important about the YAML format is you have a, a starting line. So you do a starting line, you indent, colon, indent, colon, indent. And then you, you set your property. So kind of a little bit like JSON, to be honest, setting up JSON objects. But what's important is that this sets up the, the property hierarchy. So now we had the dot separated values, spring framework dot profile dot message. And that becomes the equivalent of this in YAML. So I'm, I'm setting that up in dev and I've taken it away from the dev profile. So let's go over here, verify this is dev. And now I'm going to rerun our application. And we can see that that property get, did get wired up. Okay. So I'm going to scroll back up there. So we can see that that was brought in and my dev property files is now blank, but I, I do have this in, inside of that. And uh, IntelliJ is throwing a strange message. I'm surprised to see that, but that could just be a, a quirk because I don't have any YAML plugins in, installed in IntelliJ, but the syntax is correct and it's getting wired in correctly for us. Okay, so that's a little primer on using YAML to configure Spring Boot. You can see that I, I'm able to mix and match those. Not something I recommend doing necessarily, but I, I do like YAML. It is a cool thing to work with. I did have some problems with it a while back trying to wire up properties from a YAML file in test. The support within Spring for YAML in the test framework isn't quite there yet where you can bring in a properties file. You'd have to do some workarounds to bring in a YAML file. And this statement applies to older versions of Spring Boot. It could already be fixed or coming up. And at the time of recording this, Spring Boot 1.4 is coming out soon. So maybe that will resolve that problem. That's the only problem I've really had with YAML in the past. I do like writing in YAML. I do like writing in property files. YAML is just a little more versatile. There is one thing I want to point out about YAML is within the YAML file, there is a syntax that we can specify active profiles within YAML to 
mark a section of a, a YAML document for a specific profile. That is kind of a, a neat feature where you don't have to break out separate files. You can actually add in multiple configurations into a single YAML file. And this is something you cannot do with a dot properties file. So that is one advantage of the YAML syntax. Otherwise you can just use separate property files. So which is better? I'm, I'm not going to get into that debate. YAML is a, a nice and pleasant syntax to work with. Property files has been around for forever. They work just fine, to be honest. YAML is just a little more fun to write in, and, and I, I think it's a little easier on the eye. So, but when you're out there in the field doing development for a company, I think the main thing is to pick one or, or the other and, and stick with it. I showed you here, you can mix that. If I was in a, an actual company, I don't know if that'd be necessarily a good idea unless there's an actual reason to be mixing them. So a number of tools in the toolbox here that we can use to set properties within the Spring Framework. And I've shown you quite a few of them here in this module.